Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Library, where Star Wars is in print, the Force is with the readers, and an early EU Star Wars trilogy is about to wrap up this episode, but probably not the one you might be expecting. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler. The trilogy in question in this case is the three-book arc that makes up the first half of the so-called Jedi Prince or Trioculus series. That's right, this time we are dealing with August 1992's Zorba the Hutt's Revenge by Paul and Hollis Davids. It's another of these young reader books from Phantom Skylark. So just as before, we've got the cool little Dramatis Personae in the front that has the characters' pictures. We have The Adventure Continues, kind of an expanded opening crawl and summary of previous books. In the back, you've got a glossary and spaced throughout the book itself, you've got pictures to go along with it. Uh, young reader in the sense that it's geared kind of toward the Galaxy of Fear age group as opposed to, say, the uh, Jedi Apprentice and Jedi Quest age group out there. In the gap between Dark Force Rising and The Last Command, Bantam is publishing these kids' books. And all in 1992, you get this entire three-book series. What we thought was only going to be a three-book series turns out it's the first trilogy of a pair of trilogies that was meant to originally be a trilogy of trilogies. Sound familiar, Star Wars fans? Um, in this case, ending with Zorba the Hutt's Revenge, which focuses on the dreadlocked father of Jabba the Hutt and the Val Kilmer-looking, apparently, uh, three-eyed supposed son of Palpatine, who's really not the uh, pretender to the throne, Trioculus. It's an odd one, because, of course, the last book ended with Luke finding out about this lost city of the Jedi underneath the surface of one of the continents on Yavin 4, and meets Kin, the supposed Jedi prince, and his droids, um, and Trioculus starts having a thing for Leia, wanting to make her into his queen of the Empire, even as Trioculus himself is dying from uh, the things he's done to make it look like he can use the Force and whatnot, and he's now scarred from burns, because of going after a plant on Yavin 4 to save him from blindness after he already sets the jungle ablaze. Again, all in the previous book. I should also note here that in August of 1992, we saw the publication of the second Dark Horse Star Wars comic series, though it's not original material. It is Classic Star Wars, beginning with Classic Star Wars number one. Uh, this is a reprint series of Archie Goodwin and Al Williams' run on the newspaper strips for the Los Angeles Times Newspaper Syndicate. Uh, we've covered this in detail in the past when talking about the newspaper strips, but this series, its 20-issue run, has begun as of now. This book basically starts a little bit mundane. You have uh, Luke and the droids and Ken are just basically planning on buying a housewarming gift for Han, because Han has now bought a place on Cloud City, and they go to the so-called Droid Fest, sure, why not, uh, held by the Jawas on Tatooine, and they buy a droid named KT-18, or Kate, a house-cleaning droid, essentially. Meanwhile, though, Zorba the Hutt, Jabba's father, introduced here, but used in later Expanded Universe stories, even before this series was considered back in continuity again, uh, Zorba the Hutt is just now, a year after the events of Return of the Jedi, learning that his son is dead. And he doesn't even know who killed him, until he finds out on Tatooine when he tries to visit the palace and such, and can't get in, he has to wind up going down and uh, uh, speaking with some government officials, winds up meeting Moff Hissa, Trioculus and such. Um, he winds up finding out that Leia was the one who killed him. So now he wants revenge on Leia, and he hires this Barabel named Tibor, T-I-B-O-R, uh, to basically find her, bring her back, so she can be punished for killing Zorba's son. He wants revenge, hence the title of the book. Zorba winds up going to Cloud City, where he has a copy of Jabba's will. Now that will says that Jabba owned the Holiday Towers Casino on Cloud City, which means that now Zorba owns it, and he's able to bet against Lando, and because he owns the property, he's able to use his own deck in a game of Sabacc. The deck, of course, is rigged. He cheats Lando, and now he wins control of all of Cloud City. So Lando was the governor, but not anymore. Now Zorba is in control of it, and they're all going to have to leave. Before they can leave, though, Kate winds up falling down into the atmosphere, and Luke and Leia zip down to catch her, only to wind up crashing onto a barge 
that is run by Trioculus. Basically, uh, it's down there in the system. It's creating all this, it's called braze. It's like a brown haze in the atmosphere. If you haven't caught it yet, there are heavy, heavy, smack you over the head overtones of environmentalist policy suggestions in these books. Teach the kids early to respect the environment and so forth. You know, don't go kill the whales. Don't burn down the rainforest. And now, watch out for pollution. And so on and so on and so on. Um, so they're captured. Well, Leia is captured. Luke and KT get away fine. But Leia is captured and brought to Trioculus, which is exactly what he wants. Because he wants her. Not as a prisoner, but as his queen. Hopefully. Um, she's not so much into that as one of my favorite early bits of Star Wars art winds up showing us here, where she goes whap across Trioculus's face. Uh, she's doing it, you know, with the heel of her hand, too. It doesn't even look like she's really slapping so much she's doing like the Bah! with the heel of her hand martial arts style. Uh, Tibor and Zorba wind up capturing Kin, and they want to trade Kin to Trioculus, right? Here's the one that was said to bring you down and such. You want him so much, you take him, we get Leia to exact our vengeance. But Trioculus doesn't want a deal. A battle ensues in which our heroes manage to escape, and Zorba and Cloud City's guards and such manage to subdue and capture Trioculus. Trioculus is brought down not by our heroes, but by Zorba. And Zorba believes at the time that Leia is dead. So in theory, as of right now, the vendetta, the vengeance quest is now officially over. As for Trioculus, as I showed you as an example of the art inside, he is carbon frozen and taken as a prisoner of Zorba. So essentially it's a, a cycle that's sort of an all's well that ends well, but it ends in an odd way in that it's not really our hero saving the day per se, it's sort of a villain versus villain type of conclusion. And we wind up finding that this is not the end, because even though it looked like it was going to be a trilogy, and it seems like it is by the end of this book, even at the end of this book they are previewing book four of this series, Mission from Mount Yoda. No, I'm not kidding about that title. So again, is this book, Zorba the Hutt's Revenge, an essential read? I would again say, unless you're reading this entire series, in which case the answer is yes, otherwise the answer is no. Uh, some elements of this have been borrowed by the official continuity even before these were back in the official continuity because remember at one point there was a list, books either in or out, it wasn't about the elements in the Holocron database or anything like that. Um, some elements were borrowed early on, but the series winds up being tossed out uh, and it's just kind of an odd little book. It's certainly not essential in the way that say the Thrawn trilogy is or Hand of Thrawn duology is or the X-Wing series is. It's a cool weird little piece of early Star Wars and a neat way to end these rather odd three books, but it's certainly not something that you couldn't uh, ex understand the rest of the expanded universe without reading. Uh, better off probably reading a summary on the Star Wars Timeline Gold or elsewhere so you can just see how this book fits in with everything else with the retcons and such already in place within the summaries uh, to fit it in with the modern EU or the modern EU until Disney comes in and goes and blows it all to little teeny tiny bits like a Death Star. With that, we'll wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the readers.